Hello everybody, Loretta Calvert, Legally Quirky. Um, today we're going to start in chapter one of the book. Uh, some of you might see that I've got on a CR shirt for Celebrate Recovery. If you have any questions about CR or if you're in CR right now, go ahead and you know you can leave a comment about um, that and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about what Celebrate Recovery is. Um, but today I'm going to read you chapter one from the book. I hope you enjoy it. So the first chapter is called Set Boundaries. Patio Furniture Guy and I met online. Oh, and since this is the first chapter of the book, let me just tell you, I did not use anybody's real name or real job because I live in a really small town and it would be pretty easy for people to figure out who it was that I went on the date. So I changed everybody's names and identifiers. Patio Furniture Guy and I had met online. He was more than six feet tall, boasted military service, had dark hair and light eyes, and was a Libra. His photos showed an attractive, confident, fun-loving person who could clean up when he wanted to for the occasion. We started talking through Facebook. Eventually, we exchanged real numbers and started to have phone calls. I could hear his voice, and he could establish that he was not being catfished. You are too good to be true, girl, he said. He told me about one of the other females in my age range in our town. I had seen her photo too. I thought it was actually a meme. No one would post a photo of themselves missing teeth and using a beer can as a roller. But I live in a very odd part of the world. <laughs> After a marriage in which I had been mostly ignored, patio furniture guy's attention was sweet. He loved texting in the morning, at lunch, and to say goodnight, even if we had talked for an hour that day. He would hear a song, think of me, and then send me a link to the song. I would listen and reciprocate. We went back and forth like that for a while. Oh, it was also during the COVID-19 pandemic, so everyone had a little too much time on his or her hand. After bumping into some people online who would text and then disappear, I made it clear I was not looking for a casual hookup. I enjoyed Patio Furniture Guy's enthusiasm and outlook. We met one day in a parking lot for breakfast. The first thing I noticed was that he did not use current photos. Patio Furniture Guy was skinnier and had all gray hair on his head. I wondered how old were those photos he used. However, he was all smiles, polite, and easy to talk to. Plus, he shared my love of music. A successful breakfast date meant he graduated to a lunch date. He met my friend Mary when I had to stop by my office. He seemed sane, she said, but if you go missing, I can describe him to the police. Good luck. Eventually, Patio Furniture Guy and I had dinner and a movie together. At that point, even though we were dating, the texting leveled up even more. I was getting about 100 texts a day from the minute my phone was turned on to when I shut it down at night. We had been dating for two weeks when he introduced me to his younger son, who was around 19 years old. Then he wanted me to meet his older son, wanted to plan vacations together, and started complaining about his apartment lease being up soon. Then he told me he loved me. You, dear reader, have probably realized what I did not. He was a narcissist, and he was love-bombing me. Once I saw the red flags, I could not unsee them. I decided to set a boundary. The boundary was for him to stop texting me during work hours. My job had started up again with masks and social distancing. I did not have time for so many texts. He did not respect the boundary. When I ended the relationship, I calmly explained that I made a request and he had not respected it. You didn't listen to me, patio furniture guy. There is a thing called narcissistic rage, and that was what he displayed. The last words he said, were, oh, I listen, I'll show you, click. I had divorced a narcissist, so this person did not scare me. I am also an excellent shot and have guns strategically placed in my home. I went to bed. The next morning, as I was getting ready for work, I swore I heard something outside my door. I presumed it was my neighbor leaving for work. I opened my door at 7.15 to head to my car, and I found patio furniture waiting for me on my doorstep. During one of my conversations with Patio Furniture Guy, I had mentioned I had ordered two chairs, but the order had been canceled due to COVID-19 shortages. The chairs on my doorstop were the exact chairs I'd mentioned, but in a different color. 
He was trying to show me he listened. I thought sarcastically, nope, that's not odd at all. I put down my coffee and my briefcase, moved the furniture inside, and then left for work. He texted me a few weeks later, later, patio furniture guy wanted me to know how great he was doing, and he still thought of me. He never mentioned the chairs, but we both knew. Weird. I never sat in those chairs. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And that is lesson one. There's also a takeaway at the end of every chapter. I'll save that for you in case you decide to buy the book. Um, chapter two will be posted shortly. And I'm probably going to read up to chapter five. And then I'm going to take a break and switch to how I met um, the man that I am currently engaged to and what are considered green flags, good things in relationships. So thanks for listening. And if you want to get notifications about when the next video is up, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks.